In the heart of Yorkshire, a handful of dealers are ready and waiting. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five! Get out of the snow! The five, who are all at the top of their trade, are 70s kitsch fanatic Estelle. Oh, wow. Design lover Tash, fan of toys and all things French, AD, plus Ian and James. <laughs> They're ready to spend their money, but have no idea what they might be bidding on today. First up is Gail, with a collection she hopes will set the dealer's pulses racing. So the items I've brought in today are a selection of medical items from the 1940s, I believe. Simon might be surprised at one of the items that I've brought. I think it is quite unusual. Before entering the bidding room, her objects will be valued by our expert Simon, who's been an auctioneer for nearly 30 years. Come on in, Gail. Nice to meet you. And you. Hello. Hello, hello. Now, um, I, think I know what these are. <laughs> But how did you come to own them? My husband actually salvaged them out of a skip. He saw the skeleton and asked if he could take it. Yeah. And the man said, take what you want. So he got that and the posters. You, do, do you know anything about them? I mean, I don't know where they come from in terms of their age. Well, only from some internet research. Okay. I think the posters are from the 1940s. I'd even go a little bit earlier than 40s, you know. I might say even to the 1930s. Right. Produced for St John's Ambulance. As well, that, teaching. Yeah, that was partly why my husband was interested in them, because we both used to be members of St John. So this is a teaching tool for them? Teaching tool. The, the, the posters, of which we've got another little group here, but um, that's the largest size, I think, yes. isn't it? These posters are usually by a chap called Tech, T-E-C-K. They're basically paper on a, on a linen yes. background. They're signed by him at the bottom, I think. They are signed, yes. yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. And then our little chap in the oak cabinet here, obviously not bone, he's a, no. a, a plastic. He's got a nice little hinged jaw. <laughs> they are collectible. They are collectible. What do people do with them? I mean, the, the posters you'd hang as they are, basically, just as display pieces. But this chap, actually, I love. I'd love to own this myself. You know, he's great. <laughs> It's great as a collection, but I can see there'll be a fair bit of interest next door. I can see them bidding pretty strong on these, you know. So, Gail, ask away. So, Simon, what do you think they're worth? I'm trying to sort of tot up in my head. I mean, I've seen these larger ones retailing for, you know, £70, £100 each all day. So we've got maybe three of those, two smaller ones. We've got this little chap then. Easily three to four hundred bracket, oh, but you might good. see a little more. Three to four hundred? Were you expecting that? I wasn't. No, that's very good. Nor was I. <laughs> that's really good. It is. Now, just to recap, when you go in there, it's best to have all these bullet points, isn't it? I think 1930s girls, so stick with that. Uh, St John's Ambulance, point out that connection. The illustrator is a chap called Tech, and just, you know, just emphasise the collectability value, if you yeah. like, as a nice collection. Well, Gail, thank you very much for bringing these in. And the very, very best of luck. I think you'll do well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. We like a skeleton, don't we? We do. <laughs> we just love them. He looks quite happy. He does. It went really well in the valuation room. Simon valued them at three to four hundred pounds, which I was really happy with. I'm hopeful that I'm, I will get that when I go in and see the dealers. Armed with expert knowledge, Gail is ready to face the dealers. Could Master of the Macabre James or Curio Collector Ian be the ones for her to target? Right, I've got a joke for you. Go on. Why did the skeleton not want to go to the party? Why, well, go on. He had nobody to go with. Ah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hiya. I'm all right, thank you. Good, what's your name? It's Gail. He looks like he's lost a bit of weight. He has, yes. Poor man. He's been in the loft for a while. Well, am I, am I thinking... A little collection of anatomical posters. Yes. Am I thinking that corner? To an extent, yes, but I'm thinking these are sort of 1960s. Simon said 1930s, he thought. Really? OK. Yes. Right, I'm intrigued. Where has this skeleton been living? The skeleton has been living in the loft. <laughs> right. Can you imagine having a workman in saying you've got to go to the lofter <laughs> and the water tank well, and the husband's up there? Because much as, much as we love him, we haven't really got anywhere to put him. Well, he's only tiny. How <laughs> big's your house? He doesn't eat a lot. <laughs> he's actually... We call him the pygmy. Oh. And what's that actually made out of? As Simon said the case was oak and yeah. the actual skeleton is just plastic. It's not made of bone. Right, OK. 
If you want to come and have a look, feel free. <laughs> Hello, James. He definitely looks better out of the cabinet. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? You'd want him in the garden with the wind blowing around him, wouldn't you? So oh, wind chimes, yeah. Moved. <laughs> it's pretty well made. He's really fun. Generally, for me, I like my stuff a bit older, but that's not to say I don't, don't like him. And then, if I could have a quick look at some of these, possibly. If you group yeah. these on a wall, they, they are quite decorative, you know. Um, I like that one. Yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? That's what's great about Tom and E posters. It's all educational, and then it, you go into the art form as well. I think it's really great because some people look at them and think a little bit, ooh, a bit grotesque, but it's us as a human form, you know? I mean, for me, I actually prefer the, the diagrams more than the skeleton. Not because it bothers me of what it is, it's just... So it's an art form. I always was quite keen on biology at school. I was quite good at it. Nigel said he really loved them, and Simon actually wanted to buy the skeleton himself. Did he? I'm not surprised. He did. All right, shall we start the bidding then? <laughs> Gail's collection is valued at three to four hundred pounds. Time to see if she can bag a deal at that price. So I'll kick it off at fifty for the entire collection. I'll throw 60. I'm going to go 150. Oh. OK. I'll do 160. 180. 190. 200. 210. 230. 240. 250. See, I'm not the only one that likes dead things. <laughs> 260. 270. 280. 290. 300. Right, for me, there's not a lot of meat left on the bone. <laughs> so <laughs> I am going to say I am out. I only sell kind of pre 40s, pre 20s. They're just a bit late. I only want the skeleton. I thought that might be the case. I only, only want the art. Well, there you go. Yeah, hang on, I want the po I want the skeleton as well. Oh, I'd come back now. in for the skeleton. Oh, I want them Lord, all. Here we go <laughs> once again. You might be on to a winner here. I might be. Three ten. I'm not going to bid anymore. Three hundred is my max. Yeah, I'm done as well. Thank you, Kurt. Three twenty. Right. <laughs> 3.30. Is that the final, final offer? Uh, no, yeah, oh, no, I'm, no, I'm going to go out. OK, 3.30, we've got a yeah. deal. 3.30, <laughs> we've got a deal. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Gail, what did they value it at? They valued um, them between three and 400, so... OK. You've got a good deal okay. there then, Tash. Yeah. So Tash bought all of the items for £330, which I was really pleased with. Make no bones about it. As they came out of escape, that was 100% profit, so I'm over the moon. Thank you so much for accepting my bid. You're welcome. Enjoy the skeleton. Yeah. Thanks, girl. Well, well, thanks well, a lot, well. man. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I'm going to use it to take my husband on holiday um, with, with the money that I've made today in the bidding room. Oh, I love it. Are you going to name? Are you going to rename him? Oh no, it's still called Ian. It's everything called Ian. Oh. Everything, everything yeah, small not? and cute, yeah. <laughs> cute. <laughs> Small and spangly. 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 Next to arrive at our Yorkshire HQ is Martin, with some historical treasures from the county's industrial past. The items I've brought today have four wheels, can be pushed, and are used for moving materials. I'm really interested to find out a bit more about these items because they, they are a throwback to the Industrial Revolution. Well, four in a row. They're a bit dusty and dirty, you know how I feel about yeah. that. I'd like them to be cleaned up. But I'm thinking, what do you reckon? Garden? Potatoes. Potatoes in there, wouldn't you? You could. <laughs> I'm beginning to warm to them. <laughs> Maybe we should ask Martin. Mm. Martin, come on in and explain yourself. Well, what can I tell you about them? They, they actually belong to my sister-in-law. Do they? She, she bought an old mill. It actually, it was originally a Sunday school building which was used in later days for as a weaving shed. These were left in the mill. I find them a bit spooky. I don't know why. <laughs> I quite like them, you know. Really? You know, been, yeah. Perhaps you find them a bit scary, but they're a sort of throwback, I guess, to the age, the golden age of the mills, really, aren't they? And rather than sort of laundry carts, they're more from 
woolen mills, that kind of thing. Yes. So you, you, you put it in and then wheel it into the next room. Yeah. It's just a way of getting the cotton from A to B. Of course, when uh, cheap imports came from abroad, the mills declined, yeah. and, and these were basically sort of deemed useless. Yeah. They looked sort of late Victorian, Edwardian, that sort of early 1900s. Here's come to a question, are they collectible? <laughs> to the right person. In today's antique market where it's all shabby chic and all the rest of it and repurposing, they've sort of gained a new lease of life because people will turn these into something, I don't know whether you perhaps take the wheels off, flip them upside down, Perspex top, you've got a bar table, patio table. Condition, actually, bar, you know, sort of scratches and, and the odd dent. I mean, they're not bad. I mean, there's a bit of dust, a bit of grime, yep. but we don't mind that. So, Martin, far away with that question you're dying to ask. OK, Simon, what do you think they're worth? Do you know what, Martin? I, th I think we'd better get Nigel a chair, because I'm going to say... I'm going to say you're going to be around about 80 to £100 pound each. Right. So that would take us to, what, three, three to four hundred? Four hundred pounds. Mike, are you pleased with that? Yeah, I think that's about the mark. We sold them for a hundred pounds, so that's consistent. That's good. You're good to know you're consistent, yeah. Simon. Yeah. When you go into the dealer's room, it's best to have all the bullet points right out in here yeah. so you know exactly what you're talking about. Bullet points for Martin's take next door are that we're early 20th century, I think. Make sure they realise that they're cotton mill carts as opposed to laundry carts. Yeah. Original, not been messed about with. Make them think what they can turn them into. Martin, good luck. Thank Go you. Go in there, push them hard. Yes. Don't stand for any laundering. <laughs> Money laundry. Uh, have fun, that's the best. I will do. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank nice you, to meet you. Thank you, and you. You see, one minute we're getting nice, ornate French. Yeah. That's very me. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get these dusty old... Yeah. yeah. Nice industrial. Yeah. Simon's valuation was three to four hundred pounds, which is, you know, what we were hoping to achieve. I'll go in there and uh, see what we can achieve. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Um, Martin. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Martin. Everybody? Um, uh, James, yeah, we've, we've got a bit of a problem. Did you see another dealer when you came in anywhere? Uh, no, I didn't. We've all no. missed no. Ian! <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think I had a climb in there. Oh, we're all just checking <laughs> for woodworm. Well done. <laughs> yeah, we're all sound there, lady. They're absolutely fine. Come on, fine. on your chair. Get out on. the car. Get Come out. on. You'll find plenty of history in there. Did you see it? Oh, There's loads cool. down there. You want, to, yeah. you want to get in and have a look? These are very interesting things, and you've got four of them. Where did you get them from? Yeah, they came out of a... Well, it was an old uh, Methodist Sunday school building that had been used as a, a weaving shed for a while. They were left behind when, they, um, when the mill was abandoned and, and just sold off. What have you been using these at home for? Gathering dust. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, Lots of it inside. They were, they were stored in the basement of the building. My sister-in-law and her husband... Uh, acquired the building to convert it to a home. Unfortunately, my sister, sister-in-law lost her husband uh, a while back and she's just clearing the place now to, to sell it off. I imagine these would have originally been used in the weaving sheds to actually yes. move either raw materials yes. or finished, yeah. like, worsted from place to place. You can see that they've worked really hard over yeah. the years. I was just about to say, I bet they've seen some very long day's work as yeah. well. When I look at them, I just imagine the hundreds of pairs of hands that have, yeah. you know, that have shifted yeah. them around the place over the years. And I think, if anything, you know, as much as you can use it just to put something in, you can actually go back to using them to cart things around in that are too heavy to carry. Yeah. That's yeah. what's great about them as well. Yeah, I mean, they'd make a great log store. Yeah, like, just Some people... Thought. I mean, we had ten originally. Crikey. Uh, a, a couple have been sold. Uh, and I know that at least one was acquired to, to turn it into a, a, a display table, I believe, for a, for a boutique. I think they were putting a top on it and going to yeah. sell jeans off the top of it. We buy a lot of um, um, fabrics and textiles, so for me, this is just a great um, true. thing to display on. And, you know, my partner would just, just die for these, I'm sure. Can you tell us anything else? Nigel thought they were a bit dusty. He likes <laughs> shiny things, then, Nigel. <laughs> yes. Simon was, was quite interested. I mean, he talked about the potential to upcycle them. Simon said that he thought these were Edwardian or thereabouts. So, uh, he talked about, you know, the golden age of, of, of the mills in this part of the world. OK, with that, then, let's get it kicked off. The dealers are intrigued by the four vintage industrial carts. 
So can Martin push them beyond Simon's three to four hundred pound valuation? I'll kick them off at fifty pounds. I'll go sixty. Oh, uh, okay. I'll go hundred. Estelle, you're not going to go for these, are no, you? No, they're too dusty. <laughs> 150. 200. Let you know, I am out. Mm. I'm not sure. 220. 250. I think the thing for me, guys, is, um, is the history. And the, you know, the chance to own that history. I'd rather leave them to aid you. I, I like them, but they're better off with him. I'm inclined to agree. I think they're... I, I'm going to pop it down to Aidy's corner and see where he goes with them. 300. In all honesty, I think that's... <clears throat> that's still a bit less than we could achieve. What have you got to achieve? We've sold a couple at 100. Each. Each. Mm. 380. We'll make it 400 oh. and we'll call it a deal. I'll offer you 400 quid for the four. OK, done. Yeah, oh, great. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't got any money on me. <laughs> I'm feeling really pleased, actually. Eddie bought the carts for 400 pounds. I got the price that I wanted. It's been a great day. I've really enjoyed the experience. Thank you. Yeah. Do you think you're a bit of a, a bioholic when it comes to antiques? What makes you say that? <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> you know when somebody says you can't have it? Yeah. Does it make you want it even more? Yeah. <laughs> Gonna show you a picture. What I bought the other day, right, three years this bloke was saying you can't have it, and I bought it. Let's have a look. It's a life-size figure of that frock. It's Mr Toad in it, off Wind in the Willows. Fabulous, isn't it? Why did you want that? Why? Because yeah. he said I couldn't have it. <laughs> My mate bought um, a Shuko racing car, and I found one better than his. Um, so then I bought a Shuko boat and sent him a photograph of that. And we are both buying these Shuko toys. And then all of a sudden, every fire engine I was trying to bid on was going up. And I thought, why is he was bidding on the same one? Well. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. It is. I'm toad mad now. I'm going to buy you a toad. He went now really quick. Motoring... You've sold it? Yeah, motoring museum. I thought you wanted it. I know, but I... I couldn't help not take a profit. <laughs> Do you want to buy a Shuko racing car? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Third in are Anjali and her daughter, India, with a vintage piece of kitsch that they hope will grab the dealer's attention. Our item is pink tassely. You'll find it in the boudoir, and it's very pretty. Hello. Welcome to the bidding room, Anjali, India, mother, daughter. Yes. You've brought a lovely little piece in, haven't you? <laughs> Where's that been living? In the boudoir. <laughs> in the boudoir? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly you thought, I'm going to sell this. I collect quite a lot of chairs and oh, um, we needed to make a bit of space. OK. So I was pressured into selling it. Were you? Are you a bit of a chair collector? <laughs> just yes. a bit. Is your house just a mass of chairs? Or... No. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so where, where do you find it? Um, online. You, you, you spend a lot of time looking for chairs online. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Huh? OK. And how much did you pay, if it's not too rude a question? Uh, £20, something like that. £20? Yeah, yeah. Joan Collins is a good friend of mine. And I thought it looked rather nice in her... <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, classic. In her boudoir. Absolute classic. You could buy it for Joan. I could buy it for Joan, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> the Joan Collins reference, actually, is pretty spot on, because, I mean, it probably dates mid-60s, 1970, that sort of date. Looked everywhere on it. I cannot, I cannot see a, um, a maker's name on, but there's one company that did make these, the Cresta Art Limited from London, okay. and they, this is their shape. Typical of them with these sort of uh, double-padded uh, back and seat and then this gilded tubular metal frame. We've got this lovely uh, tassel there to the, to the seat. But, I mean, they were, they were pretty sort of mass-produced, but okay. they had that sort of 60s... Vibe to glamour. them, you know. Yeah, glamour, exactly. Collectible? Absolutely. Oh, really? You've, you've, hit, you've hit the market at the right time. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, there's, no, there's nothing grand about it construction-wise, but it's yeah. in vogue. It will sell. It will sell. But for how much are Simon? 
So how much will it sell for, Simon? You've bought well at £20, so you're going to make a profit. From my experience, I can usually sell them from anything to... £50 to £80. Pounds. So when you go into the dealer's room, just remember these bullet points. They know Cresta Art Limited, so quote that. I reckon mid, mid to late 60s, Nigel, will be it, when it? Yeah. Um, and it's just in vogue. I think they're going to love it. OK, thank you for bringing thank it you. in. Thank Lovely you. Thank you very much. You. you too. Have lots of fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Do you mind if I just have a you crack at it? Carry on. To see if it, it... I just wouldn't mind just having a little sit down at it. Yes. Too bad, isn't it? It's very comfortable. Mm. Mm. Hello. <laughs> I just feel a bit odd. So Simon told us that it's a really collectible chair, which we didn't know, which is good news. Nigel thought um, Joan Collins would look really nice in it. It's really nice to be doing this with my daughter. So we're going to work together and get a really good price. Hiya. Welcome to the bidding room. What are your names? My name's India. India and? My name's Anjali. Would you like to reveal the item? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. That's exactly what I thought it was. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought it was. Right, can I, can I go and have a look at... Cos finally, a bit of 60s kitsch for me. Absolutely. Right, this is... I'm going to have a look. There should be a mark on the bottom, but it should be by... Cre oh, there's no mark on the bottom. It if is was, Cresta. It is Cresta yes. Art, 1960s. Yep. Hollywood Regency, yes. very Liberace. Yes. Uh, it's a boudoir vanity chair. There you go. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, it's for your dressing table, for your dressing room, yes. and it's uh, just for wow. putting your powder. It suits you so well. It's very <gasps> astir, isn't it? I cannot tell you how many of these I've bought and sold. Wow. I get quite a lot, actually. <laughs> I've had one of these, and funny enough, I had a purple one. It's one of the very first items that I bought and sold that was vintage. Do you know, I had one of these, and I put it in the post, uh, and it broke. Why did it break? Because you shoved it in the letterbox. And <laughs> <laughs> he's put it in a jiffy bag. Yeah. It won't fit. <laughs> I don't get this sort of stuff. So, I mean, so in your face to me. Yeah, so... it's meant to be, yeah. It's like, boom. It's a real pop of colour, I am isn't here. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am gold yeah. and pink. Pure kitsch, Hollywood Regency, 60s, yeah. I could sit there and do me lippy. Ian, you look very Liberace sitting there. Well, sitting there with my legs apart, with cowboy boots, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, very li a Liberace, pink, is In a pink it? It boudoir chair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does, it really does suit you. I could do the Bond. Oh, Whey! Now, that's more... <laughs> Ian, that's more Christine Keeler. All I need is a bowler hat and a stick now. <laughs> you minx. Hey. <laughs> Steady on, Tash. Steady it's what happens good. when you mention boudoir. <laughs> We've seen these chairs about. They're not very rare, but it's quite nice to see it in a really good condition and in a good colour of all the tassels on them, cos usually, like, they're ripped off at the ends and that, so... We've got a good piece, but I do know that there's quite a few of these on the market. James, you sitting there a little bit quiet there. Yeah. Wouldn't it look nice in the Gothic mansion? Um, do you reckon? I think it might. Yeah, just as a contrast. Style, yeah. 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 It would ping on your website, that would ping out <laughs> in a certain way. You can see Dracula sat on that. Can you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could I start the bidding? Of course. The dealers are all familiar with the chair, but do any of them like it enough to match the 50 to 80 pounds valuation? Right, so I'm going to start the bidding based on what I've previously bought them for, which is £5. Pounds. £5? Pounds. Yeah, £5. Pounds. That does sound mean, oh, doesn't it? That That's a starting bid. Do you anyone want to...? I am going to let you know I can't help because I'm not going to be bidding. Right. Sorry. But... And I'm going to follow in quickly. Yeah, I'm out. I'm sorry. Down to you and Nestel, Oh. <laughs> If everyone is out, I would make you an offer on it. So, is everybody out, Tasha? I'm going to be out, I'm afraid. Right, yeah. so I'm the only one in. I know what I can sell them for, top-notch, good condition like that. So I would offer you, and I'm being generous here, at £50. OK, well, <laughs> I 
think we're going I've to... got to make money on it. Yeah, absolutely. But we've been offered more than that. And Nigel said that he can sell it to Joan Collins for more. Than Him that. and Joan <laughs> Collins. He knows her, doesn't he? Yeah. Joan, Joan's probably got five of these. So, so what do you what money do you want for it? Um we were looking at probably what about near 80, 90 pounds. Yeah. I would go to 60 and that would be it. To take it home today, and that would be it. Yeah, that's not enough for what we're looking for. Are you sure you wouldn't accept 60? Not really, no. <sighs> it's nice, it's nice. The top, top, I would... 65. OK. All right, what do you think? I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. OK. We're going to take it back with OK, well, that's great. But thank you very much. much. Thank you for bringing it in. It's a lovely piece, thank and I would you. love to have owned it, but it wasn't to be. So thanks <laughs> It was a good giggle as well. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much, thank ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Estelle was prepared to give us 65. Um, it was a good price, um, but I do know I can get more. I'm thrilled that we get to take it home with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that we're bringing the chair home, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> Next to take on the bidding room is Melissa, with a bouncy throwback from the 1970s. Today I brought something that I think will put a smile on people's faces. It's bright and cheerful, will please the adults and the children alike. <laughs> yes, Wimbledon Common. My, um, my dad was MP for Wimbledon. Did you ever see any Wombles at all? Oh, all the time. <laughs> Melissa. How lovely to meet you, and thank you for coming and bringing, bringing you. this, um... You, you describe it. It's a red womble space hopper. How long have you had it, and where did you get it from? I think I might have bought it at a car boot sale. Right. Um, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> did you deflate it to put it away? It was, has never been inflated until I brought it. Really? This is a first. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Incredible. How wonderful is that? But just great fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> to think it's the first it's first time sweet. it's been inflated today, which is... Yeah, yeah it's great. great. It makes me laugh. It's, great. it's like a big tomato with a woman <laughs> stuck on the top of it. <laughs> these were for preschool children, I think, these ones, weren't they? Hence the size, obviously. There was a huge craze. But then they started doing little different versions and they, it never took off in the same sort of commercial way. So I'm not sure how long they did the Womble version of. Collectors must... Go mad for these. Yeah, things. I mean, retro yeah. toys, vintage toys, that kind of thing um, is very in at the minute, isn't it? Absolutely. We've seen a lot of vintage toys and they, they always do well. Well, I'm saying the word vintage and hoping. So, Melissa, now is the time to ask that all important question. What do you think the dealers will pay for it? It's not an easy one. I must admit, I've never had one to sell before. So, I'm going to go with my gut instinct and say probably 30 to 40 pounds. But we'll see. They might fall really in love with it and I go on it. I have a feeling it might go for 50 to 60. Mm. Could do. Could do. So, to sum up... Bullet points for Melissa to take next door. Well, early 70s toys, Wombles connection, obviously, and it'll just sell itself because it's fun. Well, thank you so much for bringing this lovely little thing in today, making us all smile. And very best of luck. I think you'll do well. Thank you very much. Thank you. You didn't come in this morning and think... Wombles. <laughs> I really didn't. No, I wasn't top of your list. No. No, but it's really... I think it's fun. Mm. It's a tomato. It's a great big tomato. It is a bit of fun. <laughs> Simon valued it at between 30 to £40. Pounds. I was hoping for a little bit more. I'm not nervous facing the dealers. I used to work in a secure unit. Facing the dealers would be just like a walk in the park. Well, hello, gang. Oh. Well, hello. <laughs> I brought a little friend with me, Orinoco. I was going to say that's Orinoco. Look at that. Oh, he's not going to be well, good. Here we go now. Uh, you just stay. He's a good lad. There you right. go. Was a Womble mm. a puppet? No. Or no. A cartoon? Oh. But the Wombles were a book by, I think, Elizabeth Beresford, and they lived on Wimbledon Common. There was Orinoco and there was Madame They're Cholet. Real. They're real. Oh, no, you're ones. going. Oh, he's no. gone again. Hey. <laughs> come on, you're coming with me. Mind his arm. That was very quick work. That's yeah, the quickest I've seen you move in a long while, actually. Ooh. Have fun, anyway. Thank, Thank you. you. Is he rubber or plastic? Huh? Is he rubber or plastic at the time? I'm not telling you. Oh. Hello, mate. Hello. 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 What's your name? I'm Melissa. Hello, Hello Melissa. Melissa. Good afternoon. Hello, Melissa. And what have you brought in today? 
Yeah, he's grabbed it already. Back. It's called a Womble. It's, uh, he has a name, Orinoco. One of my partner's friends, her name is Dee, and she was one of the original um, Wombles. No, I thought it was a cartoon. Yeah, but they had a pop group in the 70s. You and know They were nothing. dressed up in, like, Womble outfits, and they had... Remember, remember you're a Womble. Remember you're a Womble. Womble, Womble, a Womble. And then it was, then it was the I wish you were Wombling oh, Merry yeah. Christmas. Did they make... One of these space hoppers for every Womble. I believe, from what Simon has said, there was the space hopper, and then they made the smaller ones. Not so many of them. But does anybody remember space hoppers? Yeah. 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 Ready, Aidy? Go on. This is how you do it. Look at this. And smile. So I can't <laughs> smile as well, can I? <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Can you do that? I can. Go on then. <laughs> And that's how you space up. I'm impressed. I never had a space hopper. I never jumped on it. I've oh, seen it. Tash. Sorry. You've never lived, love. You've I'd, never lived. I had a bike and roller skates. I have to say, the space hoppers I remember are the, the you know, ones. The, the orange ones, and they reproduced them a few years They've ago. They've got like they? horns sticking out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've never, never seen him. Yeah, I've never seen something like that. There are two types like that, apparently, when I was two. looking up about it. And the hands are different um, on one from the other. And that is the rarer of the two. Is he talking to you? No, it's, it's saying... It's deflating. It's, it's right, How what you're saying. How many Wombles were there? There was loads. And then there's been more added in recent oh, times. Oh, a bit like Mr Men. Yeah, I know a lot about them, I liked you? the Wombles. They were amazing. So, everybody, it's quite rare. Retro Vintage, he needs a good home. I'd like to leave him with one of you today. And I hope you... Give him a space in your house or... Or a space hopper. Yeah, I was going to say a space hopper. Right, he wants to know whether we can get to the bidding, please. The dealers are bouncing with enthusiasm for Melissa's 70s space hopper. So, can she sell for more than Simon's 30 to £40 pounds valuation? I'll start £10. Pounds. 15 He needs a little bit more than that. £25. £50. Pounds. 55 pounds 60 65. 70. 75. 80. I know the original Orioko. <laughs> it's got to come with me. Will you accept it? And he wants to stay with me. I'm not even going to argue. He even looks point. like me, look. Is he the same colour as you? <laughs> I think James is interested. I'm out, no. <laughs> it suited you. <laughs> yeah. To be perfectly honest, I could bid all day and AD will just outbid me. Well, I know it's my size. But I'm out. Well, as you well. had a go. Oh, I didn't have a go and on you that didn't, one. I know. I used you... my imaginary one, if you yeah. remember. Oh, and you could have a real one. I never had break there. Tash, are you out? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm out. Do we have a deal at eighty pounds? We do. Excellent. And I'm pleased for it to go to a good home. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. I was really pleased. Simon valued it between thirty to forty pounds. Eighty off me eighteen. Hi, darling, thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye, Mummy. Bye. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> Mummy. Where are you going, Mummy? I knew that it was going home with AD. Right, round the car park, get it out. Let's go. No way. I've got a pump in the back of the car. We'll get it blown up. Isn't it great? <laughs> Last in is Chris, with something he hopes will rock the dealer's world. The item I bought today is an autographed item that marks a significant event in musical history. I would hope that the dealers are blown away by the item and bring us back an awful lot of happy memories. Well, there we go. Blast from the past. Yeah. This was a momentous day, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I remember watching it on television. Yeah, me too. Well, I think we should ask Chris about the background. Yeah, about the history of it, yes. yeah. Chris, thank you very much. Are you an old rocker? <clears throat> yeah, sorry, a young rocker. We'll go for old. <laughs> so when did you buy it? Um, I bought it um, 8th of July, right. uh, 85, right. which was, I think, if memory serves me, it was a Monday right. in central London. So, um, and then you got the signatures afterwards? Um, on, I got the signatures on the Friday. I had a whisper that um, they were going to be about and they were going to do some filming. So you managed to get th three signatures? Yep. 
Bob Geldof, Nick Kershaw and Terry Wogan. Oh, excellent. Tell me, um, Simon, do you know much about... I mean, do, do these well, come uh, up quite a lot? It's difficult. Uh, well, the, 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 you, you do see them from time to time, but, of course, this one's unique in the, in the way that it's been signed. It's uh, double-sided in the frame. Yeah. On the back, we've got the, the line-ups for, for, for the Wembley show and for the Philadelphia show. Yeah. But it survived extremely well. I mean, the colours are still pin-sharp. Um, no moth holes, which a lot of my 80s T-shirts have. <laughs> <laughs> What's the market like for this sort of thing? market for, for rock and pop memorabilia in general is, has always been and will always be strong, you know. Yeah. And when you've got such an iconic uh, concert as this, it sort of lifts, lifts things up. I think you, you'd like to ask that question now, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> ask away. <laughs> what would you say the value of it is, uh, please? They're slightly difficult to value when we've got signed pieces because it, it depends on the appeal of, of the signatures to a certain person. Do you know, I, I'm going to say 100, 150, Chris. I, I don't know where that falls in with your expectations. I think that would be um, the starting point, hopefully. OK. You know, I think they'll all have a go at this. I think they'll all get very, very excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they won't want to let it go, will they? They'll, they'll, so. No, because they'll never, they'll never see an exact one no. like this, will they? Because mm. of the nature of the, of the signatures, signatures that are on it. Yeah. So let's ask Simon for the bullet points you can take into the dealer's room. Obviously, it's an iconic day in the history of music. You've got the 1980s collectability. I'd push the Bob Geldof signature, as he's one, obviously one of the organisers of the event. And I'm, I'm sure they'll just have a really good go. So, Chris, thank you so much for bringing this in. I wish you the very best of luck. I think you're going to do very well, don't you? Mm. Yeah, thank yeah, you very much indeed, Jen. Nice to meet you. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. I've signed T-shirts in my time, and it's a very difficult thing to, to sign. Mm, they sort of, sort of move with a pen. Yeah. Mm. I haven't had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> the valuation room, it went really well. Um, really helpful, really informative. Hopefully, uh, they'll all love it. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello sir. How are you doing? F great to see all of you. I'm doing fine. Great to see you. <laughs> oh, you're excited, aren't you? You are. What's your name? My name is Chris. Hello, Hello Chris. Hey. Chris. Hello, Chris. Chris. How are you doing? <laughs> Go on, Chris, do your stuff. T-shirt? Oh my god, a live A T-shirt. Oh, oh wow. wow. Is it and it's signed, is it? Is it signed? Oh. Yes. Wow. Whose wow. signature is on there? Bob Geldof, Nick Kershaw, and Terry Wogan. <laughs> Terry Wogan! Oh my goodness, you've done it. It was one mile. Yeah, yeah. Chris, did you actually go to Live Aid then? No, I missed it. Um, I was working all day. I didn't see anything of it. Can I just have a, a closer look at these signatures? Oh, you by all means. Yeah. yeah. Not that I'm doubting who they are. I just want to see how clear they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are much clearer close up, aren't they? Chris, why are you selling this then? I've had two very young relatives that have passed. Um, way before their time. Oh. Also, um, their mother. Really? Oh. Um, so the money um, I intend to put towards um, a sea rescue and charity. That's lovely. Well, what can we say? <laughs> I think it said it what all. Can you yeah. say that you love it and you want it. <laughs> I remember watching it on TV, I rem and I remember it being a really big deal and I remember the whole sort of like the Christmas uh, you know single and everything and I remember like watching Freddie Mercury and uh, you know and say as uh, status quo do they play? Yeah, yeah. Should we start the bidding? Let's go for it. Simon's valued the 80s t-shirt at 100 to 150 pounds but with plenty of interest from the dealers can Chris do even better? I am going to start because I know roughly what a band T-shirt goes for, because I like band T-shirts, so I'm, I start the bidding at £250. That might go some way towards paying for... The frame! Right. The hooks <laughs> <laughs> on the back. £300. That will go a little bit further for the hooks and the wood. <laughs> 350 then. Four hundred pounds. Remember, it's reversible. I know, remembering it's reversible. I'll go five hundred. I think I'm think I'm done, Chris. 
you're done? I know. I, I, I think I am. I'm going to be done. It isn't my field, although I appreciate it and remember it, but I'm kind of not in it for dealing. So I think, I think you better concentrate one with the, the green goddess down there and see where you go. It's a one-off. Well, my, my bid is 500. Your bid is 500. How are we going to go any higher, like 550 or 600? I think you've been given a good price there. We've got a deal. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and I will do something else. If I sell it, I will also give you half of the profit to go to your charity. I'm over the moon. I really am. Thank you and every one of you. I mean it. Thank you. Thank you, mate. I'm totally in shock. Absolutely fantastic. The whole experience is faultless. What did Simon value it at? Uh, 100 to 150. OK. If I was invited back, I would do it in a heartbeat. Thank you Thanks so much. You. Thanks a lot. Stay healthy, live long and be happy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. What a gent. Lovely guy. Absolutely yeah. lovely. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. <laughs> I like the Terry Wogan signature myself. Yeah, it's unusual. You wouldn't expect to see that, would you? I love what I love Terry. Love Tezza.